The speaker is uh, Professor Karada uh, Karada Chersky and from University Sershinsky and uh, Poland. Please. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would like to present you today uh, a little bit more theory than experiment, a uh, kind of comparison between DD reactions and proton induced reactions. So I think um, we are starting to uh, to understand the reactions uh, in a much deeper manner. And what is still missing, it is something, uh, a new view on proton-proton uh, reactions at very low energies, uh, because you, you have heard so many groups can measure heat excess even with the light hydrogen gas loading experiments. So you see here standard uh, DD reactions, uh, neutron-proton channels, and you had already to get to today. Gammas shouldn't be observed at very low energies, but electron-positron uh, emission, it is a new channel which is much stronger than proton and neutron at, at low energies. But the question is what will happen if you have two protons and the mechanism with this uh, standard mechanism that is known, known for energy production in, in, in sun, in uh, stellar interior, the standard proton-proton reaction that is responsible for synthesis of deuteron or deuterium in, in the sun. And then you have beta plus decay uh, because we have a two-step reaction. I will speak about it more detail uh, next time. Before we, uh, we start about uh, thinking about more uh, theoretical things, some uh, basics which are important to, to follow this uh, lecture. We will speak in the term of S-factor. You have cross-section and S-factor, astrophysical factor, you see in this expression, the, uh, describes nuclear mechanism and, and all the penetration tunneling <coughs> effect are included only in this exponential function uh, energy dependence here. Uh, so we have here EG, gamma of energy, which is expressed here with this uh, uh, relation. So some uh, experimental exp uh, uh, ex uh, experiments, you see here, for instance, uh, helium-3 alpha gamma reactions at very low energies. This is also one of the most important reactions in the proton-proton uh, chain uh, in our sun. And you see very flat, very nice, uh, by dropping cross-section down to uh, very low energies. If we present the same cross-section in the, in the frame of S-factor, it is very, uh, very flat, very almost constant uh, value. So the main effect here is the penetration through the Coulomb barrier tunnel effect. Okay, and there are some other cases, uh, magnesium P gamma reaction, for instance, and you see there is not so flat. There are some resonances here. The resonances of com compound nucleus, there are some uh, unstable states, which are this is the nature of this compound nucleus. Here is uh, aluminum 25. And we recognize the structure of this uh, compound nucleus just changing the. Uh, incident energy of the protons, and then we see some resonances step by step, different thickness, different um, amplitude as well. Okay, so this is something what is uh, standard uh, nuclear astrophysics, and uh, uh, we can come back now to the our to our cases, uh, DP reaction on neutrons, and there are some earth of measurements measured before, and you see here once again S-factor, and this S-factor is almost constant at very low energies. We know it already from previous measurements, and, and the S-factor is 5.6, 10 to minus 2 mega times bar. If you have another reaction, you know this gamma channel, which is uh, very, very weak, one, uh, you will see this seven orders of magnitude in S factor, you see. 
And the same penetration factor is between uh, for the D reaction, the P reaction, or the gamma reaction. And you see once again the experimental data, vertical curve, and S factor uh, that confirms the seven orders of magnitude difference. We understand what is the uh, reason for that is because you have here strong interaction, here you have electromagnetic interaction, and there is so called E2 transition, which is much weaker than dipole. Uh, transition. So we understand very well what is the origin of this difference. If you go further, uh, so we are speaking about proton induced reaction. Another possibility is a P gamma reaction on neutrons at very low energies as well. So sometimes in your gas loading experiments, you have not not only protons but also neutrons. Uh, even the natural composition of of uh, Hydrogen is, you know, you have uh, uh, roughly one promile of, of neutrons inside. So you should take also in count, into account this kind of reaction. And here you have um, S factor that is 10 to minus 7. It is uh, five orders of magnitude lower than the P reaction. This the P reaction can, use, can be used, you know, as a kind of, of benchmarking or comparison for different kinds of reactions with very low energies. Okay, and uh, the reaction I would like to study more in detail is proton-proton reaction. And usually, the people use uh, you know standard uh, constant value for S factor and use some additionally uh, factors which are uh, because of this two-step. Mechanism. The proton proton will be captured to the compound system and then will decay by beta plus decay to deuterium. Deuterium uh, ground state. We will speak, see that deuterium have SO excited state. Uh, and the value that uh, usually will be used in nuclear astrophysics to understand, you know, origin of, of elements and everything in the universe. Uh, this, uh, this S factor is 10 to minus 25 because of weak interaction that is um, uh, responsible for this transition. So it is 23 orders of magnitude lower than the P reaction. Okay? So 23 orders of magnitude. This is why we are speaking about the proton proton reactions. Is, it is very difficult to understand why we produce energy in, in hydrogen loading experiments. Okay, this is just a uh, small introduction. And um, uh, all the pictures, all the figures I have presented you uh, don't include screening energy. But we know that screening energy is very low, as of our nuclear astrophysics, for plasma physics. Uh, but it takes place, this effect is strong at very low energies, far below the Coulomb barrier, where the uh, Roughly, it is, uh, you can say that the, if you have the kinetic energy of projectiles is roughly 10 times the screening energy, then you can see the enhancement because of the screening energy. So if you have DD reactions, and the, you will see that screening energy is about 500 electron volts, then we can expect already at 10 kilo electron volts some effects of them, and much stronger will be at 5 kV. It is because there are some electrons that can screen the Coulomb barrier between two reacting neutrons. And uh, this is very easy from the mathematical point of view. The Coulomb interaction that is responsible for this Coulomb barrier between uh, is uh, screened by the screening function this type. And then if you expand this function into uh, Taylor series and you take first uh, term, then we have this screen energy. It is okay because the distance between uh, nuclei, so so-called so uh, classical alternate point, is much lower than A, which is uh, screen length. And length, uh, screen length is of the of the radius of the atom. So this uh, uh, this uh, ratio here is very small. And um, once again, penetration factor for so-called S waves. Um, and S-wave uh, contribution is the 
largest one at very low in edges, is just this penetration factor through the Coulomb barrier. And if you want to use, um, include, involve the screening, we put just in the penetration factor uh, additional energy screening, energy UE. And this is enough to include this reduction of the of the height of the Coulomb barrier because of screening, because it this constant value. So this, what we will see in the in Natalia talk, for instance, which will take place on Wednesday, this is not so easy. At very low energies, there is some non-linearities which should be included, and there is not the same screening energy we measure at accelerator experiments compared to thermal energies. Thermal energy it is much lower, maybe 60-70% of, of that what we measure. And uh, our results uh, we've obtained uh, some time ago and presented and published already. So you see this uh, in increase of the in so-called enhancement factor, but this uh, as an increase of the S factor at very low energy, this exponential like function that usually can be fitted by one parameter, screening energy, and this this exponential like enhancement. But in the case of DD reactions we measured some time ago, uh, very high precision, ultra high vacuum measurements, we see that this, this blue line that you, he is responsible for screening is not b the best fit. You see that the experimental data are uh, lower, systematically lower in the range of 10 and uh, 15 kb and systematically higher at uh, at energies below 10. So this is something else that is needed to, to be included and this is uh, uh, resonance and the, in the compound nucleus, threshold resonance and there are some theoretical arguments for that, that this threshold resonance in helium-4 so at the energy zero, very close to the energy zero, should really take place. I don't uh, want to go into the taste now because this is not subject of this uh, of this presentation, but there are really uh, some experimental uh, in, uh, hints, uh, indications and some theoretical indications which are in, uh, very important. And if you extrapolate the data we measured here down to wrong temperature, you see that this, this resonance can, we don't know exactly where this resonance is. Uh, this could be one electron of volt, uh, positive energy or 0.1 and this and you know that um, we measure thermal energy it is uh, somewhere here uh, between this 20 30 milliecton of volts the energy kinetic energy of uh, of particles involved in uh, nuclear reactions and of course um, the cross section of the thermal energies uh, depends very strongly where this uh, uh, elect, uh, this resonance is uh, the position of this uh, resonance depends on the material as well. So, uh, so what is needed, you see this dependence of the screen energy, what we uh, should, uh, yeah, this large strong dependence, you know, if you have screen energy, in this case, we measured here, you know, this is screen energy 100 electron volt. This uh, exactly that what we uh, predicted 20 years before for the direction in zirconium, okay? And we measure now in ultra high vacuum exactly the, is this point. But uh, the screening can be changed, and this um, the um, contribution you will see in the post uh, today post session that can be changed from 100 electron to 400, 500, 600 electron volts because of vacancies in the material, because of oxygen or carbon impurities. We, have, we will present some new results and you see, you will see that if we put a little bit oxygen to our target, the conium target, we use standard uh, as a standard there, then the screen energy measured will increase very strong. Small impurity, a very small amounts, you know, less than one uh, monoatomic layer. And it is something what is really very strange. Okay, and uh, there is uh, something what um, was very exciting, uh, this resonance, but of course uh, DP reaction is not so only that what 
is uh, so important. Another finding we had uh, found, uh, yeah, uh, we described uh, in the last time is that th this resonance is zero plus resonance, so it cannot decay by gamma decay. So only possibility is internal pay production. Um, so you produce electrons and positrons. Total energy will be 23 MeV. And uh, we expect that the gamma partial width of this resonance will be about 100 milli electronovolts. And once again, what we see here, uh, Rakesh uh, and Gokul today will speak about it. You know, there, is, there are some spectra, experimental spectra measured at the, for different uh, silicon detectors uh, of different thickness and different absorption force. We see that usually in, in our case we, see, we should see proton, tritons and helium particles in the energy spectrum, but we use thick foils to remove uh, uh, tritons and helium and the proton line is moved to lower energies because of this absorption foil. And then we see small bumps of, on something which is much lighter than the protons and it could be any electrons. And if you take into account, you know, the known energy distribution of electron positrons, we'll get this bump according to Jean uh, for simulations and the position of the bump changes depending on the thickness of the detector. The position, because it is only energy that is deposited in the, in, in the detector, depends only on the thickness of the detector. So we ch changing the thickness of the detector, we change the position of, the, of this bump. And we have uh, used different detectors, so it is really something completely new. And if you measure the electron proton ratio, you'll see once again the, this curve going towards energy zero. And then we can uh, uh, fit the resonance we have measured before, and then the branching ratio for proton. Uh, uh, I, this uh, pack creation to the proton is at the thermal energies between 10, 20, we don't know exactly, it can be even 100. There is a uh, large uncertainty here at the low energy. So this do dominating reaction channel. For, so what we should measure at room temperature is probably not protons, but uh, electrons and electrons uh, have a large range and can be measured outside of the experimental setup. So it is something what was presented that we, we measure already branch triangle from, of high energy electrons and then this branch triangle can be measured using the detectors outside of the setup. Okay, so it was a little bit long introduction <laughs> and <laughs> you see here the um, uh, summary of the proton induced reactions uh, different kinds. So proton proton uh, with this beta plus decay but you have also proton electron proton and uh, they are of similar strengths from the point of view of field theory. This, um, uh, but of course uh, if you put some environment, electron density and something like this, uh, it can be, um, uh, can be different between two different reactions. But what is important, you know, in the case of the first reaction, we have positrons, electrons, charged particles, which are absorbed in the material that we uh, study. But in the case of, of the second, we have uh, neutrinos. The whole energy will be taken by neutrinos. And this uh, Q value, it is only uh, energy of the recoiled neutrons is 45 electron volts, so it is not so much that we can use for heat. Okay, and uh, because of deuterium contamination, we can expect also helium free production, but the recoil energy once again gamma so will escape, and the, the energy that we can use is only recoil energy of helium free, that's 5.5 kV. And uh, there are very interesting. Uh, reactions on lithium-67, there is no uh, electrons, there are no gammas, there are only heavy charged particles that can be fully used for energy production, but the problem is that the Coulomb barrier is much higher, it is much more difficult, but if you take into account uh, that maybe there are some proper materials with the high screen energy, it can be probably used as well for future uh, uh, sources. 
energy sources. So we come back now to proton-proton reactions and this is a small comparison what can we should take into account if you are speaking proton-proton reactions. The first point is the we, we assume that uh, for our case now the aspect is constant, constant there is no energy dependence. Uh, most, the largest contribution or very important contribution for low energy uh, measurements it is uh, uh, effective mass that is a product of masses induced uh, involved plus uh, over the sum of the masses. In the case of uh, DD this uh, one, yeah, in, in the units of um, proton mass. Uh, proton plus triton is three, uh, three fourth. Uh, proton plus deuteron is two third. Proton plus proton is one half. It is uh, already a large difference at low energies. You see here the four lines. Uh, you can compare proton proton with deuteron deuteron reaction. And because of this smaller uh, effective mass, there is already seven orders of magnitude de dependence uh, or difference uh, in, 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 you know, uh, to, for protons, uh, proton-proton reaction would be enhanced by this factor compared to the D reactions. And there is another um, comparison, if you have um, S factor, we, I have presented before, comparison between DD, proton-proton and PD reactions. And you see here uh, the calculations are made for 500 electron volts. Dominating part is the D reaction. Uh, you use this S factor, what the people use in uh, astrophysical uh, uh, cases. And you see here large dis the distance be between DP, PP. The uh, PP is here the red curve, and DD is the largest contribution. It can change if the screen energy will be lower. At lower energies, even DP or PD reaction is comparable to DD. So it is also depending on the screen energy. Okay? And now uh, about something new. Um, yeah, in the case of DD reactions, uh, we said there is a threshold resonance. But in the case of two nucleon system, it is also known Really, if you uh, in the standard uh, nuclear physics lectures, you will see that there is uh, no excited state of, of, of deuteron. But it's not true. We have a deuteron, a neutron proton system with a spin in parity 1 plus and two parallel spins. Uh, and this uh, special case, uh, uh, because the total wave function should be under symmetric. Uh, uh, response to the exchange of the particles, this probably principle. So only this system uh, can be realized if the spins are parallel. But if you have spins under parallel, you have uh, another situation. We are speaking about a uh, singlet uh, system in the spin and isospin T that uh, distinguish between neutron and proton. We are treating the neutron and proton as the same particle, but the changing uh, of the direction of isospin in the isospin space, then we have uh, also possibility to to have uh, you know excited states. So uh, neutron, d-neutron, uh, excited neutron state, and diproton in the case. And all that uh, seems to be unbound. It's not so sure, but according to the last 50 years of research, the people think. They are unbound by about 100 kV, okay? But they should be seen in the cross section if we are studying um, scattering or some reactions as well, okay? What is the the result of that? The result of that that is uh, the for well, this is red cap. And if I put, you know, this um, uh, single resonance, isolated resonance state with the boundary conditions, uh, which depends on uh, wave functions, Coulomb wave function, everything here, um, we have this resonance, what the people think, and it's completely different that I prepared, uh, showing you before, with the constant S factor. So this one thing that we 
should expand instead of that what the people say from high energy. This, this uh, resonance is, exists, and it exists because it was measured many times. At energy uh, roughly 100 kV, and the center of mass will be 50 kV, then we should have this uh, red curve in the case of, of uh, you know, uh, string energy here is roughly 500 electron volts. So you see a constant value at, at the temperature. But maybe this resonance, what we observe, or the people think to see, it is not the result of, the, of this position, but we can have a low energy or thermal energy uh, resonance, this excited neutron state. We don't know exactly uh, uh, which position. And then if you have this so-called single particle resonance here or here, we have automatically this blue curve, you have a maximum at, at high energies. And this kind of, of uh, theory or this kind of effect, we are speaking about ghost resonance or shadow resonances, which are known in nuclear physics. One case uh, which uh, is this so-called triple alpha reaction leading to carbon-12. It is also, there is also shadow resonance, very broad. Uh, much larger than, than this uh, proper position resonance that should be observed, okay? Uh, so this idea, and then if you have this resonance, you see there are um, yeah, 17 orders of magnitude higher than we thought before. So we have 7 orders of magnitude, 6, 7 orders because of reduced mass dependence. And here because of this resonance that can be of course, there's uh, yeah, a kind of speculation. Yeah, but it is something what is not ex uh, excluded. That can be, you know, this case. We, we don't know exactly where this um, uh, diproton resonance uh, is. You know, what kind of this resonance is. We don't know exactly. So we can speculate with something like this. But this is the final file I wanted to show you. This, uh, but we should compare the proton-proton reaction with the DD reaction, also with the resonance. Okay, so this is the, the blue curve, with this uh, resonance uh, curve uh, for DD reactions at different screen energies. Uh, dash curve is uh, much lower screen energies. I've spoken that we are able to change screen energies from 100 to 500 because of vacancies of, of some impurities. We can, we can measure by control way. And uh, if you take into account this resonance and then you compare this proton-proton resonance as well, you have still a very large difference. Okay? So, it is, uh, uh, on the one hand, you have, you know, um, uh, hope that is uh, so easy and everything. On the other hand, you see there is uh, a problem. But the problem is also a kind of solution. We don't know where is the, this resonance uh, in the direction take place. Maybe we shouldn't compare to the maximum of the resonance. We should take uh, care about this flat dependence here. And um, maybe the screen energy is not 500 but 100 electron volts then PPU reactions is stronger than the D reaction. It depends on the screen energy and the position of the, of the resonance. And we don't know exactly where the resonance uh, really is. Okay, and I will come to conclusion now. Um, so I think we understand now very well uh, DD reactions, this uh, composition of screening, DD resonance and E plus E minus emission. We can control the screen energy, we can measure it very quickly, changing the composition, changing the uh, vacancies, and something like this. DP reaction is four, six orders of magnitude weaker, but nevertheless, um, it can take a, play a role, of, of course, as well. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you have light hydrogen, you have only one promile of neutrons, but it is much stronger than PP reaction, and then you should see DP as well. And proton proton, 16 orders of magnitude weaker, ghost resonance, but 
It depends, everything depends on the screening and depends on the position of the resonance. It can be different. Okay, so in this case we don't know exactly anything, <laughs> but it is uh, still a hope we, we can measure something independently, you know, on, on the, of, of the thermal measurements, we should use some mechanisms, some uh, tools of nuclear physics to find out where is the position of this resonance. So we could use uh, different experimental setups, even high energy setups, to find uh, the real position of these resonances. Thank you very much. Well, a very interesting talk. I have not opened the questions, but because of the time limit, three questions. Yeah, just a question and a comment. And the question is, you are thinking about this PP reaction is not an uh, energy thoughts because you only give the only, let's say, electron volt a required energy to thermalize. I think it can be still uh, an option that PP reaction takes place in the metallic environments. Okay. No, no, I mean the rest of the energy, the pro deuterium hole after the reaction occurred. I mean, required energy is too small. You mean this recoil nuclei? <coughs> yeah. No, in the case of P reaction, you have beta plus, and the electrons will be absorbed in the setup. Okay, so it is, uh, you, you mean the this beta, beta plus energy? Yeah, beta plus energy is about 450 kV. Well, and then you should see the 511 gamma rays. Yeah, but this is you know, a strong background. This uh, strong background, and the solution is to I'm sorry, the solution is to detect electrons in this case as well, not only the d but protons. Yeah, but, but anyhow, that's a different story. Maybe we will discuss after that. But anyhow, the other thing is uh, what was that? <laughs> another thing, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> normally, the uh, PP reaction is already uh, studied very well for a long time and uh, they have a let's say, scattering length, effect range and these are from those uh, the result the, there's, I, I would say that this is not a real resonance but we call the virtual state of the, of the scattering state just we see the uh, intergoing state and I don't know how to how to uh, interpret uh, your your interpretation is make another shadow okay. resonance and so on. So the situation is really complicated. You are right. This uh, so-called S matrix pole that the people study using uh, scattering lengths in the proton proton channel. But if you look at uh, exactly, so there is, um, and you, you should distinguish between virtual states, which are pole uh, states of S matrix, and resonances. But in the case of this proton proton, the final finding is that the resonance width is uh, comparable to single particle resonance. And therefore, I can speak about not virtual state, but about um, real resonance, okay? This uh, what was the f 80 in the 80s or, or in the beginning of 90s found finally. You know? So there's you are right. There are virtual states which are so-called negative. No, yeah, there's some details. So I don't need to, to explain it. You know, uh, but in the case it can, and um, even the uh, neutron state it is also probably resonant state. Okay. Uh, what we know, the standard method to, do, to determine it is uh, uh, studying of the scattering. So we have neutron neutron scattering, neutron proton scattering, neutron uh, proton proton, and we have um, uh, positive or negative sign of this uh, uh, scattering length. If this negative, uh, we will speak this unbound state or something like this. Okay, so this uh, known situation, but this. There is no um, any problems with to combine both pictures. The, another point is here. I want to say once again, we know in the sun in the sun uh, stars, the, the, this PP reaction is uh, of most important uh, thing. You know, case. 
and therefore we cannot change the intensity of the reaction in this high energy uh, region. Okay? What we can change is only this part, low energy. Yeah, because the energy in the sun and something is, is about one kilo electron volts, the kinetic energy. So this in this region. Okay? So this uh, kind of limitation we couldn't um, you know overcome of course. Okay, so the last okay, question. Okay, let me, very short question. Um, I am especially interested on proton electrons, proton reaction. So, can you comment about proton, electron, proton? Do you quote them? Yeah, about? this uh, probably can be much even stronger than PP reaction in the metallic environments because you have uh, uh, free electrons and they can be captured and, and something like this. Uh, it should be calculated how it is. You know, you know for instance, in um, stellar plasma, once again, you have beta beryllium 7 decay. It depends, uh, this decay of beryllium 7 is, uh, depends on, on, the, on that the electrons are bound or unbound in the plasma. This is a strong effect. And here, probably this effect will be also very strong and uh, P, P, P reaction will be uh, much stronger. But yeah, we should is, calculate it. You know? If we increase the density of electrons, we have some advantage. Mm. But no, the point is we, we include already electrons by screening. So we take into account electrons by screening. Okay? So this, the, this uh, take into account this additional bound electrons for, for capture it is uh, not so easy, so I will work on that, but not, not uh, next month, okay? <laughs> okay, I think you can discuss uh, that in detail okay. later. Okay, please, thank you again. <laughs> and our next speaker is from Turkey.